Welcome, friends. I'm Luxembourg. Things look a little different to you? Yeah, this isn't my usual channel. What you see here is the Vendetta Focus, what Nihilus and I are hoping to turn into a sort of irregularly scheduled place for long-form content. Kind of like podcasts, interviews, that kind of thing. It's still real rough. We're still trying to figure stuff out, so bear with us for the moment. Um, but at the beginning of February, we made this interview with uh, Neon Black, and as you will likely be able to tell, we weren't ready at all. Um, really hadn't gotten things past the concepting phase, but Neon wasn't going to be around for very long. We worried. We were worried we wouldn't be able to get a hold of him by the time we were properly uh, prepared and whatnot. So, um, thanks for being a champ, Neon. Uh, thanks for putting up with the awkward night and um, and then waiting for me to getting around to editing this video. Uh, later down the line, we'll have to do you right. Um, without further ado, though, uh, here's PewChat die number seven. So. Welcome to Vendetta Forum. No, let me try that again. Welcome to Vendetta Focus, your irregularly scheduled podcast for all things Vendetta Online. Today in Pew Chat Die, we have our guest, Neon Black. Black, 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 black. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, doing sound editing. That, uh, that's, that's a whole different rabbit hole than video editing. No, I don't expect you would be. <laughs> uh, I, we made some videos. I, I recently made some videos for YouTube, and it, I just realized in trying to make one video just how freaking much effort it takes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it requires a certain way of thinking that doesn't really come naturally to anybody i think you have to put yourself in that mindset and once you're there it's it's one thing but getting to that point is pretty difficult that being said i um given that we would be interviewing you i did go back and look at um the only piece of content i think you've ever made for vo um which was uh what was it you unlisted it, so I had to scroll up in Discord, but it was called um, How to Play Vendetta Online with Neon Black, or something along those lines. You were in some kind of house in the woods. Um, you had a generator outside. You had a mask on, and I don't know where the mask came from. It should be <laughs> recognizable, and I didn't. And <laughs> you were running around doing all this and that. It was ah uh, yes. That was when I was uh, living out in the woods. I was on that hill by myself for a little bit too long. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that one, that one, it was fun. Um, let's see. You've done quite a number of things, as far as I know. Um. But the ones I can name off of my head are sometime after that, you were, uh, were you a cabbage picker? A cabbage picker. Uh, I don't know yeah. what it's called. <laughs> I picked some cabbage in my day. Um, I don't know exactly when you're talking about, but I have worked for a couple organic farms uh, out in California. I lived in a yurt out there working for one farm for a couple months, and then I got fired for being a terrible office manager. Apparently, I'm better at picking cabbage than uh, working on a computer, so that didn't last for very long. Uh, grew a different kind of cabbage when I was making that uh, that uh, when I made that other video when I was living out in the woods. <laughs> I uh, spent a good six months working for one of our national forests in California. Um, doing trail surveying and uh, data collection for the Mendocino National Forest. And basically just got paid uh, to hike 300 miles of trails with the GPS and 
uh, just collect data on user impact and that kind of stuff, uh, invasive species and mark areas of trail that needed, you know, some attention from trail crews and things like that. Uh, yeah, actually, when I first started playing VO was, um, I was living abroad in Thailand. This was like in 2011. And I was over there uh, teaching English. I lived there for like a year. And uh, while I was there, I, you know, I lived in a small, not, I guess not a small town in terms of Thai standards, but I lived in a small city in central province in Thailand. And I was like one of two people in this city that uh, spoke English. So I had to find a, I had to find like an online community, a game or something that I could play that, uh, where I could actually like interact with people who spoke English because I was starting to lose my mind. But, uh, <laughs> That's how I got it. And that I actually bought this like knockoff brand notebook at a mall in Thailand and a like knockoff brand Logitech joystick and went all out, like just being like, oh, this game is pretty cool. I'm going to, uh, you know, have a flight stick and fly spaceships. I've always, I've always looked for games that were, you know, decent flight simulator combat kind of games. And nothing ever really hit the itch for me until I found VO and it was like, wow, this game's like, you know, it's a little clunky and it's a little old and it doesn't look the greatest, but holy crap is the combat in this game fun. You said 2011 for that or about when? Yeah, yeah I think it was 2000, 2010 or 2011 when I started playing. Uh, shoot, was that right around when the Kickstarter happened? No, that was 2013, wasn't it? Yeah, I actually joined just before capital ships were introduced as manufacturable <laughs> uh, ships in the game. And right. Back then, right. there was, uh, when that all came around, there was a lot going on. I mean, the conquerable stations had just been introduced, and there was a lot of dynamics in the game in terms of like, ongoing wars and there was a lot more piracy and that was when fami had the spotter bots in uh at all three entrances to gray space and la familia was like this uh i guess they're family galactic travel now but uh fami was a, a big presence in the game back then and uh as a matter of fact it was uh yt 1300 i think was the first person to kill me first player to blow up my ship and uh I had ventured out into gray space in like a, you know, Revenant MK1 or something like that and got blown up by him. And I shook my fist at the sky and I said, curse you, God, I will find you YT-1300 and I will annihilate you. And how, uh, how long did it how, take to get your revenge? <laughs> uh, well, I ended up joining Fami just after that. I was like, I, oh. guys <laughs> I was like, I want to be a pirate. YT is my hero. And so, uh, uh Savet Hagar, who I think is still commander now, but it was No, no, YT's commander. Savet is basically he pops into the relay every uh couple uh months, I guess, at this point, uh makes some um crass jokes and then disappears again. So I see. that's about well, he... as much of Savet as we see these days. As I was tracking YT down and trying to learn how to kill him, which took a while. Um uh, Savet had just joined Fami, and I had ran into him and was like, oh, you're a part of that, that group, I'm going to kill you too. And uh, he ended up kind of taking me under his wing and showing me a few tricks to level up and find good weapons. He actually told me how to farm law enforcement from blasters. And I was like, oh, you guys are pretty cool. He's like, yeah, this group's pretty fun. You, you know, you should join. And uh, I talked to Football Prophet, who was commander at the time. And he brought me on board. And this was my character's back then. It was called Hippopotamus Hustler. I was in a tanny pilot. <laughs> and I unlocked the Valkyrie X1 and learned to fight from Football Prophet and Nahan Lore and Estrian Process and uh, kind of came up in the PvP game in uh, Sabina B8. And shortly after that, uh, Tridents were introduced as uh, manufacturable ships, and myself and another member of FAMI at the time, the Red Spy, decided we would break ties from our pirate ways and start a manufacturing guild, which uh, we called Trident Capital Manufacturing Group, and which is now known as uh, Trident Arms Syndicate many, many years later. Uh, we started off as pretty much the only competition to TGFT at the time, uh, 
nobody else could hold a stick to their flame, so to speak. But um, we started building cap ship parts and selling them to the community. And eventually I built the cap ship and well, the rest is history. <laughs> I mean, have you really ever had competition other than TGFT being your competition? I uh, our competition. They don't really interact with other pilots. Does did that not used to be the case? Absolutely. They were pretty much the two. I mean, there was like a conflict diamond of ore, I believe was another person selling parts back then. But at the time that Tridents were introduced to the game, like uh, there were a lot of people vying for control of the stations and trying to build them for their friends. And I, I know people were uh, in TGFT were selling parts and helping people build Tridents, but they didn't, I mean, they kind of already had the market cornered. There wasn't really a market for it. It was just like either you were friends with TGFT or you were somebody like one or um, Fami just taking the stations when you could get it and putting in work slowly on your own Tridents. Uh, whereas Trident Capital Manufacturing Group, uh, we kind of approached it from a diplomatic stance and we would pay FAMI if they own the stations or we would keep good relations with TGFT if they own the stations and we would uh, you know, try to walk that thin line of, um, you know, not having everybody in the whole universe pissed off at you enough to let you use the stations to build the uh, cap ships and then just uh, stocked up on parts and built pretty good um, like manufacturing runs for hauling all the stuff and streamlined it a bit and ended up just turning it into a money making venture. Certainly a lesson some of our uh, current pilots could uh, take to heart. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Nihilus, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so, yeah, I caught the, I, uh, caught the tail end of that. But, uh, yeah. Tries. Uh, I don't know if you went to detail on the on the actual try origin story, but uh, no, I, I actually didn't go into the into that. Although you might have to refresh my memory. I know we have it written down somewhere, and I know there's a pretty funny story around it, but I, I don't. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I should know this. I'd say, I'd say actually what I'm talking about is not the origin story of the original Trident Manufacturing Group, but the origin story of, of you know, Trident Arms Syndicate. Uh, so I guess you hadn't, chronologically, you hadn't gotten there yet. So uh, <laughs> I guess that's actually a good place to enter this story. Uh, so, yeah, I think the way that I'm told, you know, um, you were you had kind of built yourself up, you know, over time as as to be, you know, a a, a prominent member member of the of the Trident Manufacturing Group Guild. Um, but I think a pilot named um, I want to say the Red Spy. Okay, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the seizing of the throne. Uh, so I was a founding member along with Prim, uh, who isn't around, doesn't play anymore. Uh, a lot of these people don't play anymore. The Red Spy and myself, Prim, the Red Spy and myself came up with the idea and started the group. And, uh, you know, I don't remember really who else was involved because none of them really stuck around for very long. We were a small group from the beginning and, you know, here and there people came and uh, came and left. But at the time we had a pretty good group. Everybody was manufacturers. Not all of us were PVPers. I mean, me and the Red Spy liked fighting uh, and came from FAMI, so we were pretty, you know, pretty well versed in combat. And uh, <laughs> okay, well, the lore of what happened is, <laughs> and I'm going to make a distinction here because uh, let's just stick with the lore. Let's just stick with the lore. <laughs> That's the juice. 
<laughs> well, what happened was uh, one day, and I'd have to go through and reread the write-up that I did like five years ago about what happened, because I'm sure there's specifics that I'm missing. But... I'm pretty sure I have the actual chat log somewhere. Somebody had sent that to me one time. Oh, yeah. I think it was the Red Spy that actually sent it to me. Yeah, okay. it's on the forum. Uh, Fami was de- uh, trying to take a station from probably like TGFT or something like that. And... Uh, the Red Spy, who is currently commander of Trident Action Group, decided it would be a good idea to help FAMI uh, take the station. And we had already come up with this, you know, neutrality principle that we aren't going to get involved with other people's political drama. And uh, the Red Spy was feeling frisky that day and decided that, ah, fuck it, we're going to just join FAMI and be like the pirate manufacturer group and we're going to take what we want. And myself and the rest of the council who were on the line at the time uh, had a public conversation with him on channel 100 about, uh, hey, you know, do that. And he was getting uh, all mouthy about it. And uh, so we voted him out of his commander spot and kicked him from the, the guild. <laughs> and then they appointed me as commander. And I seized control of Trident Capital Manufacturing Group at that point. And uh, the Red Spy went on to join FAMI again. Or maybe it was that's how he joined FAMI. I'm pretty sure we met in FAMI, but I could be wrong about that. And then he went and started his espionage alt and started uh, Red and became more of an aggressive pilot in the game and less of a, uh, I'm going to help out noobs and build cap ships. And uh, I took up the mantle of uh, commander of try and i remember that there was some colorful conversation around that whole day um but yeah we'll, we'll find the uh we'll find you you were right it's in the it's in the vendetta forms we'll find the uh we'll find the thread and post it uh post it with this video it was pretty comical i remember uh it being yes, like yeah, it's very fair. Fair. sit down and eat popcorn and watch what's going on in 100 kind of moment yeah, for sure. For sure. Not the kind of thing we do nowadays. I'm guessing <laughs> this was this was much more flavor, you know. This this popcorn. Oh, had some, okay. This popcorn had some salt on it, you know. <laughs> it was uh, it was a pretty glorious moment, and uh, well, it was very entertaining for the community at least. And uh, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, we ended up uh moving forward solidifying that kind of neutral stance and making that a cornerstone for how we kind of run run things and try and since then i mean we have i our guild has had a hand in making so many freaking tridents it's unbelievable and uh, i mean i've probably had a hand in the manufacture of probably more than 200 tridents i'm not even exaggerating there yeah and and the, you know the distinction that i'd like to that i'd like to make is I, you know i don't think that um no I'm, i don't really know tgft's business uh you know i'm friends with all those guys but we don't we don't really discuss what their what their business history is so it's like as far as i'm aware of though i don't think there's another guild in the game that has contributed to as many uh, capital ships that were built outside of our guild as us. Um, and I don't think, I don't think anyone even comes close. The only people who would possibly come close would be TGFT. But again, I think most of the everything's in house with them. Yeah. Yeah. I think the most of the capital ships they built are for our TGFT members. Um, so, you know, do they rival us on how many tridents that we were, um, that we contributed to building, maybe, but you know, a much more significant portion of their builds have been for TGFT Tridents. You know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's another guild that really comes close to, uh, you know, how how many Tridents outside of our guild we've we've helped we've helped build. So, um, and we had a time uh, where if you joined Try and you showed that you had some, you know, drive and some like. Capa- uh, capacity for you know actually being powerful enough to be in charge of manufacturing and stuff that we would build you a trident like we had a point there where like every person I had a trident who was any sort of pilot that that deserved one yeah and the thing the thing with that is I think what kind of led us that like away from that path was uh 
you know, it's like how much effort you put into building someone a trident and then they just stop playing the game. Um, that gets that gets disheartening after a while. And it's like, you know, you think that, you know, those kind of builds should like cascade um, into making b- building that much easier. But uh, <laughs> when, that, when all of them are kind of disappearing or, you know, just staying docked, uh, it makes that whole strategy less effective. So it's like... You know, there where we only had we only had very few people in the group, and it was because of that. Like we just wanted people who were dedicated to really pumping out production uh, that we would even consider for the group. And but once you were in, it was like okay, time for you to be flying a capital ship. Yeah, kind of how Zeha got started. I'm guessing. Yep, I definitely helped him make try it. That's for sure. I will say Zeha, um, we helped him at the tail end, but um, he was pretty dead. That guy was that guy was dead set on doing most of the work himself, and he was just hauling an even, XC. Uh, even nowadays, yeah, he was one of the. He's always been one of those pilots where he's like, nope, nope, I want to, I want to figure this out for myself, which is definitely, uh, definitely admirable. Not a quality you find in pilots very often. All right, you need well, on? I hope you guys got enough uh, sound clips for you. I'm going to head out here, but uh, <laughs> let me know if I mean if there's any touch up or anything to do. I mean, we can meet up maybe next weekend or um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think we I think we got plenty. Um, well, I look forward to seeing what you guys. Good you fights and there. good insights into the magical mind of neon black. <laughs> Thanks for uh, <laughs> hanging out with us, man. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Any time, well, any time I. But uh, you guys, enjoy. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have. I'm sure we'll have you back on as a uh, as a guest in the future. So. Cool. Take it easy, guys. Good. All right, dude. See you. Cheers.